بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Urinary System by Dr. Ayman Ahmad Khamfour, Assistant Professor of Anatomy and Embryology, Alexandria University. Today we'll talk about the ureter, concerning its anatomy, applied anatomy, and a group of short questions. Now, what's meant by the ureter? As we see here in the, in the picture, it is just a tube that conveys urine. So it is a musculotubular structure which conveys urine from the kidney, which is the site of production of urine, to the urinary bladder, which is the site of reservoir of urine. What about the lens of the ureter? Yes, actually, the ureter is about from 25 to 30 centimeters. And it is very interesting that half of its distance lies in the abdomen and the other half lies in the pelvis. What about the beginning and terminations of the ureter? Now we'll start by the beginning of the ureter. The ureter begins from this part, which is the wide part, which is called the renal pelvis, that's formed of aggregation of what's called major calluses, which are the collecting parts of the kidney. Collecting units of the kidney. This is the beginning. And where it terminates? It terminates by entering into the urinary bladder in what is called posterior superior angles. Simply, we can say lateral angle of the bladder, but actually and accurately, it is better to say posterior superior angles of the urinary bladder. Now, we mentioned before the word renal pelvis. What's meant by renal pelvis? Yes, it is a funnel-shaped, funnel-shaped part of the ureter, which is slightly wider. It is formed by the aggregation of what's called major calluses, which is a part of the collecting system of the kidney, it has variations. Sometimes it may be embedded inside the kidney or outside the kidney or partially inside and partially outside the kidney. Does the ureter of uniform thickness and width also? No. There is an area or areas which are called anatomical narrowings of the ureter. What are those? Any tubular structure is characterized by narrowing at its beginning and its termination, the same as the esophagus. Can we apply this here? Sure. So, the first site of narrowing is its beginning, which is this part. The second site is its termination where it passes through the substance of the urinary bladder. The third one, it also has the same idea as it leaves the abdomen to enter the pelvis by crossing the end of the common iliac artery or the beginning of the external iliac artery. What is the importance of those areas of anatomical narrowing of the ureter? Yes, we hear about ureteric stones. These are stones which are formed either primarily inside the ureter or become secondary to stones already formed inside the kidney and descend down in the ureter. Yes, during the descent of these stones, 
they find the areas of the anatomical line narrowing and they become arrested in it. So the value of the areas of the anatomical narrowing is that the ureteric stones may be arrested at any of those sites. And as we know, the pain extends to the groin. What is the groin? It is the area of junction on each side between the abdomen and the lower limb. What are the parts of the aorta? Look to this picture. Yes, this part lies inside the abdomen. So, <coughs> it is called the abdominal part. This part lies in the pelvis. So, it is called the pelvic part. The last part passes through the wall of the urinary bladder. So, it is called the either intramural part or interstitial part. Now we will start by the first part, which is the abdominal part of the ureter. Look to this picture. This is the ureter. This is the ureter. This is a posterior abdominal wall overlaid by a muscle here, which is called the psoas major muscle. So, this abdominal part, the ureter, descends over this muscle, which is called psoas major muscle, under cover of peritoneum. Under cover of peritoneum. That's why we say it is a retro peritoneal structure. Yes. How it leaves the abdomen? Yes. Through crossing the level of the pelvic brim or pelvic inlet. Where this level lies at, it lies at the level of the termination of the external iliac artery or beginning of the, ex I said here, termination of the common iliac artery or the beginning of the external iliac artery. On the left side, on the left side only, there is a fold of peritoneum. What's meant by fold of peritoneum? It is a double layer of peritoneum. We will discuss it in details with the GIT module. There is a fold of peritoneum that holds the sigmoid mesocolon. It is called the sigmoid mesocolon or pelvic mesocolon. This part of it is called apex. So, in addition, on the left side, it, it passes behind the apex of the sigmoid mesocolon or pelvic mesocolon. Relations of the abdominal part of the ureter. We can elicit it from this diagram. There is a very simplified diagram. We can do it together. How? We just do the great vessels of the, of the posterior abdominal wall, which are the aorta and inferior vena cava. On each side, there is a famous muscle which is called the psoas major, which is penetrated by this nerve, which is called the genitofemoral nerve. The ureter descends over the muscle and the nerve. After that, we draw both kidneys and the ureter, which is crossed by most of the vessels that arise from the abdominal aorta. Now, there is a difference between relations on both sides. So, the best method is to put them in a table. Yes, we are lucky that the posterior relations on both sides, they are the same. Which are the muscle and the nerve penetrating it. So, a major muscle and genitofemoral nerve. You may ask about what so a minor. It is a small muscle overlying psoas major and it may be present and may be absent. Now we have reached the anterior relations. Yes, can you see what I'm doing by my hand? This is C-shaped curvature. C-shaped curvature. It represents the duodenum. This part of the duodenum is called the third part. 
which lies anterior to the the, uh, the right ureter. As we see from the diagram, look carefully to this area. You will see now the duodenum. So this is the third part of the duodenum. It lies anterior to the right ureter. What else? The remaining are a group of arteries that arise from the abdominal aorta, which are the right colic artery, right gonadal artery, and iliocolic artery. What is remaining? We have a fold of peritoneum. What's meant by a fold of peritoneum? If this is a part of the intestine, it is enclosed in a double layer of peritoneum like this. And what I'm holding now, what I'm holding now, this is called a fold of peritoneum, formed of two layers of peritoneum. One of them is related anteriorly to the right ureter, and the other one is related to the left ureter, as we will see now. So, the fold of peritoneum related anteriorly to the right ureter is that holding is that holding the jejunum and ileum and called mesentery. The part which attaches the mesentery to the posterior abdominal wall, this part what I'm pointing to is called root of the mesentery. So, again, this mesentery, it is nothing more than a fold of peritoneum that crosses anteriorly the right ureter. Now we will shift for the anterior relations of the left ureter. What are those? We will start by our group of arteries. The first one is called left colic artery, left gonadal artery, and sigmoid arteries. So what is the meaning? The same idea. We have a fold of peritoneum that causes the left ureter anteriorly. But in this case, this fold of peritoneum holds what? Holds this part now is the sigmoid colon. So this fold of peritoneum is called sigmoid mesocolon or pelvic mesocolon, this part. This is sigmoid mesocolon. The part which crosses exactly the left ureter from this pelvic mesocolon is called the apex of the sigmoid mesocolon. What about the medial relations? Oh, when I hear medial relations, I remember the letter I, I. How the medial relations to the right ureter, this is this blue structure, which starts by I, which is the inferior vena cava. Inferior vena cava. And the medial relations of the left ureter, this structure, which also starts by I, which is the inferior mesenteric artery. Please, you have to write this diagram not to be confused by any of those relations. And always put in some consideration that most of those arteries cross the ureter anteriorly. Now we refresh ourselves by a multiple choice question. Which of the following is a posterior relation to the ureter? Yes, without reading these choices, I have to think. The posterior relation it is a muscle which is penetrated by a nerve and both of them lying behind the ureter. So, which of those? Yes, so genitofemoral nerve. Because all vessels, they cross the ureter. They lie anterior to the ureters. What about the pelvic part of the ureter? Oh, the pelvic part of the ureter. Look here. There's the ureter. This is the termination of the common iliac artery, and this is the beginning of the external iliac artery. So, the beginning of the pelvic part of the ureter, it is that of the termination of the abdominal part. So, we can summarize it 
by crossing the end of the common iliac artery or the beginning of the external iliac artery. And in addition, on the left side, it crosses behind the apex of the sigmoid or pelvic mesocolon. The last part, which is called the intramural part, this part passes through the substance of the wall of the urinary bladder. And notice that it doesn't penetrate it directly like this. It has an oblique course in it, and it has a role in the prevention of the reflux of urine again to the ureter when the bladder is full. What about blood supply of the ureter? It is a very long structure. It crosses many places. So I have to put my mind that the arterial supply of the ureter is segmental arterial supply. So I have to classify it into abdominal part. It receives the arterial supply from renal artery, abdominal aorta, gonadal arteries, common iliac arteries, and of course, it drains the venous blood to the veins corresponding to those arteries. What about it? It's the pelvic part, or oh, I have to think, what are the arteries present in the pelvis? Yes, have the common iliac artery, internal iliac artery, inferior artery, uterine artery, and they drain the venous blood into vena comitants, accompanying the supplying arteries. Again, another refreshment by a multiple choice question. Try to think with me. Which of the following is not an arterial supply to the ureter? I look, renal artery, testicular, oh, superior gluteal artery. It is away from this region. So, except what? Except superior gluteal artery. What about lymphatic drainage of the ureta? It is one on each side, on each side of the abdominal aorta. So it's lymphatic drainage into the bara aortic lymph nodes. In addition, its pelvic part drains into the common external and the internal iliac lymph nodes. Now we have reached in my own point of view, the most important part of the lecture, and as you know, the scope of answer of those questions is outside our curriculum. It needs you to, to do more and more search, because they are greatly linked to our clinical field of life. What is the direction of the ideal incision in the ureter for surgical removal of a stone? And why? I summarize the question again. So, line of incision, can I open longitudinal or transverse or oblique? How I do my incision from the lateral aspect or medial aspect and why? Yes, why stone in the ureter gives referred pain to the tip of the penis or clitoris? Sometimes the patient is feeling shy to, 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 to say something like this. You have to ask the patient, is there any referred pain downwards to the region of the, gen the genitalia or not? Can you explain it on anatomical basis? Yes. For contact, you can contact me through my email or my channel on YouTube or my Facebook account or my uh, group on the Facebook, which is called Dr. Ayman Anatomy Discussion.